So today we're just going to do a video on benchmarking the i7-3770. Uh, so this is the processor in my current HP Elite 8300 SFF um, computer that I customized with a GTX 1050 graphics card, 16 gigs of Rip Jaws RAM, um, and then did some other upgrades um, in regards to some, some other accessories. But today we're really just going to focus on the i7-3770. We're going to do a couple of benchmarks using CPU-Z and then Cinebench and, and see how that processor compares and see what its capabilities are in regards to gaming. Uh, so first up, we're just going to do CPU-Z. So for CPU-Z, we're just going to go to Bench. And we are going to compare it to an i7... Let's first try an i7-6700. So we're just going to bench the CPU, see how it compares. So that multi-thread score is pretty good. Um, it comes in around 520 points lower than the, than the 6700K. But again, the 6700K is two generations newer, and it's also an overclockable CPU, whereas ours is just the, the 3770, not 3770K. So we have zero ability to overclock, zero ability to change any of the settings of this processor. And then for the single thread score, it's a 3666. Um, so again, that's, that's right around 108 points below um, the 6700K, but that, that's just, again, it's a, it's a much better processor, a much newer processor. You're right against the 4790K, a little bit closer, but again, it's an overclockable CPU. 2600K definitely beats out. And then if we want to compare it to some Ryzen products or some AMD products, let's see. Let's see a Ryzen 5. Um, 1600. So it definitely beats it out on the multi-thread performance just because it has 12 threads, whereas ours only has eight threads. But single thread performance, um, the i7-3770 actually beats out the Ryzen 5 1600. So again, it has four more threads and two more cores, but we're very close in that single thread performance. Um, so we'll just that will just submit and compare the score, and then I'll show you guys what that brings up. So we have one seat, so we have four core eight thread i7-3770. Uh, the max frequency during the test was almost 3.8 gigahertz. Um, the CPU is ra um, rated for 3.9 gigahertz. That's pretty good. Um, and then it just gives you an overview of sort of the CPUs that we are comparing to. So we're better than a a Xeon E3 1270 version 2. We're also better than the 6820 i7, but that is a, um, a mobile um, model of the i7, so it's not going to perform as well, but we are doing better than that with an i7-3770. We're also doing better than an i5-8250 mobile processor. So the i7-3770 still compares really well to some of the newer processors, and it'll definitely perform great um, in regards to gaming, just because of the speeds can be kept up really high, and then it is still an eight thread processor. It's four cores, eight threads. It'll definitely work for today's games, um, especially the lower end games. It'll definitely work. Some of the higher end games it might have a little bit um, of a challenge with, but it should still perform really well. So now we're just going to go into Cinebench and do the CPU test there. And we're just going to do the CPU test. We're not going to do a single core just because that takes a really long time. So here's the overall CPU test. And honestly, Cinebench has a really cool um, CPU test. You can actually see each thread rendering a different portion of the Cinebench benchmark. Um, and it's, it's pretty cool to actually watch and see how each individual frame takes a different amount of processing. Um, some take a really long time when there's really a complex detail, complex shadows, whereas other more simple um, frames take a really short amount of time for that CPU thread to process.
So we'll just watch this and then see what our final score is. So as you can see on those, those two frames to the left, we're taking a lot of CPU um, in order to actually render and, and get that 3D image um, within that frame. So there we have it. So our i7-3770 came in at 633, um, a score of 633, which beats out um, some of the mobile versions of the i7-37, uh, third generation i7s. Um, it comes in considerably lower than a 4770K, about 200, uh, or just under, about 190 points lower than a 4770K. Again, a 4770K is one generation newer, and it's also overclockable, so you can get much more, um, free, much higher speeds out of that CPU. As you can see, it's running at 4.4 gigahertz, whereas our 3770 is running at 3.4 base clock, so that 4.4 gigahertz probably goes up to 4.9 or 5 gigahertz whereas ours maxes out at 3.9 gigahertz. So as you can see, it still is rather comparable to a lot of these other CPUs, um, some of the newer CPUs that can definitely run games extremely well. So I think with the 3770, you're getting a really good processor at a lower cost because it is older gen. Um, if you were to go with a 3770K, you're only going to see much more benefit just because that's an overclockable CPU. You can overclock it to probably similar speeds as the 4770K and still keep it at a lower cost just because it's older gen. Um, so the 3770 is definitely a really good processor and depending on the cost um, and how you're acquiring the CPU. So for me, I purchased a refurbished um, just PC desktop with the 3770 already in it. So with the 3770 in a PC, it's only around $200. So you are, again, getting a $200 um, PC with a pre-owned CPU. So it's not a brand new 3770, but it's still, for an entire system, including the CPU, it's a it's great cost. Um, it's a really good bargain. So as you can see, with even these older gen CPU, Intel CPUs that are the i7 four core eight thread CPUs, you can still definitely game and get really good graphics out of that CPU in conjunction with a, with an okay graphics card. Um, again, I have the GTX 1050 and it runs games like Fortnite and other um, less demanding games really, really well at high frames. Um, so with this 3770, you're getting really good performance at a much lower cost that allows you to run pretty much wide, range, wide assortment of, of newer games like Fortnite, like some other less demanding games. Um, so yeah, I would, I would definitely recommend this CPU, definitely recommend trying to purchase it in a refurbished or some other version of an entire desktop and just upgrading the other components like the graphics card and the RAM as I did. Um, but yeah, that's it for today's video. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. I hope you guys learned a little bit about the, about the CPU and about some of these benchmark tests. And I hope you can use it on your own systems and try and compare um, to this CPU and then see how your system compares to some of the other CPUs. It's, it's really interesting just to, to see how they compare. So if you like the video, uh, please click that like button. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it.